Hey everyone, it's Megan the Crafty Quinn. Christmas is less than two weeks away, and I've been thinking of ways to make gifts more personal this year. I'm partnering with HTV Run to show you how you can turn regular items into customized gifts. I hope you enjoyed this video, and make sure to stick around until the end for more Dollar Tree gift basket ideas. Big shout out to our sponsor for today's video, HTV Runt. They sell iron-on and adhesive vinyl and other accessories for working with vinyl at affordable prices. I'm going to be working with this white heat transfer vinyl for my projects today. And of course, I have a special discount code for my subscribers if you'd like to try this out. The fabric I'm working with for this first project is a buffalo plaid bandana from Dollar Tree, which I've been able to find at different points throughout the year. For a quicker version of this project, you can try those wooden embroidery hoops that are super in this season. There are a ton of these multi-packs on Amazon, so I went ahead and grabbed a link for you so you can find that below in my description box. I used one of those Dollar Tree signs that come with wooden beads, and I sanded off what, you, what it used to say with my finger sander, and I'm coating the back of this with Mod Podge for a more finished look, and I'm going to cover it up with some of that craft paper. So I use my roller to get it as stuck and flat to the sign as possible. And then I'm going to cut this off after I do the last step here, which is doing some heat activation just to flatten this out more and get rid of any last air bubbles. So on the other side, I use Mod Podge for the fabric and followed the same process that I just showed you. Once it was stuck to the sign, I used my X-Acto knife for the holes to come through and I'm now painting the original frame that came with the sign. The paint color is called Java and it's a chalk folk art paint. Next, we're gonna hot glue this frame down. I recommend clamping this if you, if I could have done it differently, just because hot glue worked great, but I noticed that when I picked it up, there was a bit of a gap between the frame and the sign. So I think if I had clamped it down and held it that way for a while, this gap probably wouldn't be there. When you go to use the vinyl for your Cricut or your Cricut Joy, like I did, you're going to need to stick the vinyl to your standard grip mat glossy side down. I cut the vinyl down to fit on my mat and I really liked the texture of the vinyl. Thank you HTV Ron for supplying me with the vinyl for this video so I could try your products. So you weed the vinyl like you normally would and I did not rip any of my vinyl for these projects. I do have a habit of tearing my Cricut vinyl, so I was pleasantly surprised by how HTV runs held up and just how soft it was too. Now comes the fun part. HTV Run also sent me their version of the mini heat press. I love their version more than Cricut's. It's much more affordable too if you look it up. The reason I love this is because it, it beeps to remind me it's been on a while and it's perfect for someone like me with ADHD. <laughs> And it heats up super quick, and it has a bigger heat plate as well. When I compared this with my Easy Press Mini, I noticed that HTV Ron's versions was basically double the size of the Easy Press Mini. It has a auto shut off feature at 10 minutes compared with Cricut's 13 minute auto sh uh, bleh, auto shut off feature. So I use parchment paper for some of my projects just to be safe. But with this, you can just use it on a low heat setting and you can go right just over the plastic. Next, I tie the beads back on and then I'm going to do some puffy paint to look like fallen snow as a final touch. For the puffy paint, I thought this would be better to do after the beads were already on, just so I could get as close as possible. At first I used a little bit too much puffy paint, and then when I came back after it had dried for a while, I noticed that 
Some of it looked like bubbles had popped, so I recommend not going super crazy with the puffy paint like I did and just kind of doing smaller drops. I love how this turned out and I can't wait to give this to someone as a gift. This is your vi mid video reminder to tap that subscribe button, select all notifications to follow along for more videos and help this video out by giving it a thumbs up or leaving a comment below. So we're on to project number two. This is going to be a super quick one. I found some mini snowflakes in Cricut's design space and I thought they'd be perfect to put on Dollar Tree's knitted hats. So I did one in red and I did one in black. So the red hat gave me not too much trouble at all. I was a little bit worried because the snowflake is a bit of an intricate pattern, but their vinyl held up great. The black hat actually gave me a little bit more trouble just sticking to having the vinyl stick to this knitted hat for some reason. I'm not sure if it was just the kind of knitting that was done, but I did have to go back and just use a little bit more heat on this one, but when I did, it definitely came out great. Oh my gosh, you guys, how cute are these? I can't wait to give them out. So for project number three, I grabbed two packs of these miniature stockings from Dollar Tree, and I thought they could be cute little monogrammed ornaments. I used HTV Ron's heat transfer vinyl to cut out a letter for each member of our little family. I cut out the letters to be about two inches wide and then for the final, for the font, I did a Georgia font. Apologies in advance for the shaky camera angle. I just wanted to show you how easily they can go on your Christmas tree without even needing to add ornament hooks. And now I'm just testing it to see how well adding a candy cane to the stocking would hold up. And I have to say it did work out great. I was a little bit worried that it was gonna fall out, but it did not. So these would be great for putting any kind of little stocking stuffers in here, maybe like some chapstick or things like that, but they do work well. And last but not least, we have a kitchen related monogrammed gift. I thought how cute would it be to personalize those Dollar Tree pot holders and give them as a gift. So as you can see, I'm doing this on the small pot holder and I'm going to apply this to an oven mitt as well. I picked Christmas colors mostly for this video, if you can tell. And now when I go to press this on, I'm going to be using the second highest heat setting just in case. And I'm doing this because I was a little bit concerned about the quilted pattern of the oven mat and how well the vinyl was going to hold up against it. It definitely was a little bit kind of shaky in that area where there is some stitching and you just have to press down a little bit harder to make sure the vinyl is sticking down. After the monogram is pressed on, I started building the kitchen themed gift basket full of household items and sugar cookie mix in a Dollar Tree gift box using floral foam as the base. They have so many Betty Crocker kitchen tools, so these measuring spoons were the perfect color and size for the arrangement. I wanted to wrap this all up with cellophane, but I can't seem to find any in my local stores, so that's what I would like to do with this once I can put this all together as an arrangement. 
And then I just kept adjusting everything until all of the pieces of the arrangement stuck out. I thought this turned out pretty darn cute. Now, if you're looking for more Dollar Tree gift ideas, check out these easy arrangements full of my favorite Dollar Tree seasonal picks. You gotta love Dollar Tree's holiday cups and wine bottle bags. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks again to HTV Rant for sponsoring this video. Please go check them out. If you want to watch more videos, check them out here on the left and make sure to follow me on Instagram. See y'all next time. Bye.